Hello, so today I'll be talking about uh, momentum and impulse as well as inelastic and elastic collisions which is of course part of the momentum component. So here, momentum. It's a big one. Okay, there we go. Then, momentum describes the, the uh, a mass in the motion. So let's, let's suppose we have a, a car like this. Well, rather terrible drawing. But say if if it, if it moves at a speed of say um, whatever okay just say v m s minus one to the minus one v uh, meters per second where v is velocity then um, and the mass of the car is just m we're gonna say that the momentum is equals to the product of mass and velocity and the notation we write is p and uh, since m is in kg. So the the units is in kg. So the product of um, product of moment uh, mass and velocity, which equals to uh, momentum. And momentum, remember, is a vector. We write it as we write this as as this thing, this this up arrow calling vector, in vector notation, of course, because velocity is a vector. And if you take a product of uh, the velocity vector, you will end up with a, a vector as well, which is we call it a momentum vector. And this matters because if I were to say go in opposite direction, then momentum would turn out to be negative. Negative in uh, say we have a positive direction and a negative direction. But in uh, for our case, we'll be just focusing on positive and negative, and not into different angles and all this with trigonometry will apply. And so this is a key formula that you might want to use. And also, since it's the product of kg and ms minus one, then this will be the unit for momentum. Um, kg ms m m over s, and also let's talk about now. Let's talk about elastic and inelast inelastic collisions. Uh, firstly, elastic collisions is in the case where elastic collisions collisions is in which uh, energy and momentum is conserved. So inelastic collisions. So elastic collisions is when momentum. And k uh, kinetic energy is conserved. It is conserved. So what happens is that uh, when uh, the equivalence uh, conservation of momentum, this we call it conservation of momentum, as well as conservation of energy. So if if suppose we have two cars uh, coming into each other, and then uh, they end up colliding, of course they have different different velocities uh, v2 and v1 uh, when they when they when they leave then they should uh, go the equal amount so they should return return back with an energy uh, similar energy transmitted from this one so the kinetic energy transmitted from here which is we know that ek equals half mv squared in this case it's v2 squared this is the kinetic energy that is going to be transmitted during the collision uh, suppose the collision happens right right at this moment at t, t equals t1 uh, at this moment and then when they collide uh, the energy trans is going to transmit to here and um, reflect it off or say if, if the mass of this car would, would to be heavier then it would go the other way given that the kinetic energy is larger for this side so the direction should go this way so that is for elastic collision and there is a formula for conservation of momentum Given that if I were to have conservation of energy, then half uh, mv should have mv1 squared equals half m2v2 squared, right? Because conservation of uh, energy, conservation of energy that will be for elastic collisions when the energy is fully transmitted, and then for momentum would be m1v1 equals m2v2. This is for uh, in the case of elastic collisions where momentum is conserved this will work for inelastic collisions as well because momentum is conserved momentum is conserved and but but kinetic energy is not kinetic energy is not conserved uh, because in in this case right when when they do collide when these two say cars collide this is especially a, a prominent example because it's easier to know the they they get stuck together and they don't uh, rebound off etc. So what happens when we say that is that the the momentum the initial momentum 
P, uh, M1 uh, V1 will equal to M1 plus M2 all over all times by V2 because uh, now they, they are stuck together suppose we have this this mass and this mass and then they add up become this so we can rearrange that to be V2 equals so, uh, M, M1 M1 over M1 plus M2 and times by V1 and this would be our uh, uh, n resulting velocity for this um, case of inelastic collisions this is for perfectly inelastic it's important to say perfectly perfect where momentum is conserved and kin kin kinetic, kinetic energy is not conserved suppose we have some degree of inelasticity and uh, elasticity as well suppose we have the case where there is inelasticity and both elasticity then our, co our collision will result in the loss of heat energy uh, from or frictional forces which we would describe it to be like say um, half m1 v1 squared and then we add a w which uh, counts for frictional force and then half m2 v2 squared this could work as well if we were to have such problems but it's not necessary for our uh, cases of problems but anyways um, let's proceed on to impulse impulse refers to the change in momentum over time so what, what Newton firstly said is not he did not say F equals MA a lot of people um, it's largely thought that um, Newton said uh, this this one as his Newton's second law but really what he meant was force was the change of momentum which means uh, dp over dt or uh, if you understand there it is but uh, basically what it means is that uh, change of momentum this is p as you can see from the notation over time so so uh, of course this is then newton's uh, sorry and then uh, so this is uh, force is change of time so what happened change of momentum over time so the rate of rate of change of momentum yep so what happens is that since it's the rate of the change of momentum we will have mv minus mu over t and this would be our impulsive impulse force because the impulse is the quantity of force times the time interval which is ft ft equals mv minus mu so basically what impulse is is really uh, if i were to make it more general impulse is basically there is actually no fixed notation for impulse it's just force times time it will be the integral of uh, f by the in terms of dt so that would be our that would be our impulsive force, force vector of course. Remember these are vectors, these are also vectors, vectors. So where uh, V is the final velocity and U is the initial velocity. So what happens is that uh, impulse refers to the, the uh, also has the, remember to have also the vector direction, positive and negative. It's the change in its linear momentum because there as you can see MV minus NU refers to the change uh, and force time time. So the force applied in this change of momentum so F, ft is the impulse or if you don't if you don't understand uh, calculus here this would not uh, you can um, you can omit this from your formula or whatever but this is important especially when you define what an impulse is which is an integral of a force over the time interval t for which it acts on the force where it acts on uh, during the change in momentum okay. uh, and that's pretty much it for momentum and impulse can proceed on to the uh, next part of the course which explain this explains this more in in more detail but i was i will then stop here thank you